For a brief moment, I want you to take a journey with me. Journey with me back to a time when you still believed in superheroes. Maybe you're, you were six, maybe you were 15, or maybe you were like me now, who still thinks I'm Spider-Man, webbing my way through society. Growing up, superheroes were one of the things that really got me actively engaged in changing a community. I watched Spider-Man web his way across town, fighting crime and injustices. Just like the Marvel superhero, Peter Parker, I too saw myself putting on a mask and webbing through society, allowing my voice to be heard to cause forth systemic change. As a nonprofit executive and a formal, former Port Huron uh, Michigan City Council member, I found myself discovering that in real life, the superheroes that were out there didn't necessarily web their way through society, but they were webbing the minds of young leaders in classrooms. That they were on the front line fighting for social justice and equality and rights for all people. That these superheroes sat behind desks in corporations where they can make decisions that could change the world. They sat with robes on in courtrooms and utilized their voices to play sentences on people. And you had the educators in classrooms fighting not just to educate, but to mother and father students, to be counselors and to be individuals who provided food for me, as I think about those individuals, I think about my story and how I could utilize my voice to help and advocate for others who may not have had a voice or the resources to be at the table to express their voice. The sounds of political activist Ashada Shakur pierced through my ears and my heart like the drum beats in the movie Jumanji. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. In this moment, I have to ask, what is it that has you chained? Many of us have been chained by outdated policies, procedures and practices in government, our places of employment, our places of worship, in schools, in communities, and somehow it is our duty to fight for those systems to be changed, those policies to be updated, and procedures to be renewed. How do we do that? We use our voice to organize our communities within our schools, with, on our jobs, and advocate for the change that's needed. Remember, your voice has the power to change families, communities, schools, places of worship, and the atmosphere of your places of employment. But change comes when we understand the one superpower that we all have, our voice. All of us, no matter what backgrounds we come from, have some unique story crafted and woven by our life growing up, our parents, our peers at school, our downfalls, 
our hard times, our good times, our children. And we must learn to use those unique stories to reach up and speak out for those who may not be able to have their stories told or heard. Let me tell you a story of a little boy who realized at an early age that his voice had the power to shape policies. He was six years old when he discovered the power of his voice. See, this young child understood early that if his parents had a policy that he did not necessarily want to follow, such as no dessert until you eat all of your food, when it came to that portion of green beans that he didn't want, he would just yell out a certain scream and cry until he got that dessert because he really didn't care for green beans. This young child began to grow up and understand that even at school, he had the power to shape policies. He joined a student government group and got really active in his student body at school. And he understood that it didn't matter where he came from or how much money his parents had, that in that group he can help make change throughout the school. And because this kid was a great student and also a student who loved lunch, the favorite class of the day for him would be when the bell rang and it was lunch. And so he knew that the options at his school weren't really the greatest for students, and so he got out and got involved and started advocating for those students to have healthier choices and options at lunch. He then understood that if he could use his voice to adopt the concept of W.E.B. Du Bois that says that a tenth of a population will go out into a society, go off and get their education, go to a skilled trade, but then come back into their community and give back, utilizing the voice that they had gained, utilizing the knowledge and the wisdom of their shared experiences with the world. This young child later learned that it didn't matter how much money he had or the amount of education he had, but that if he spoke up and shared his story with many, lives could be changed. At the age of 20, this young man lost his, almost lost his life to a bullet that was shot a half an inch away from his aorta artery. He lived in a community that didn't understand uh, learning who people were before they prejudged them. The newspapers wrote that he was a gang member. He was into drugs and violence. They didn't know that this young man was a college student who worked two jobs to try to get ahead. So they reported gang member Alfonso Amos shot, leaving a downtown club. Although I was just having fun with my friends, just enjoying life with my friends and my roommates, we had just gotten a new place together, just like everybody else, but identified as a gang member. Quick, my voice was silent. My job stripped away because they thought I was involved in criminal activity. But understanding that no one can take my voice, no one could take my story, but that I had to share my story on my own. I thought and fought hard to get out and advocate for people who may not have had access to political leaders or media outlets but they had access to mentors, to teachers, to peers at work and colleagues. And so today, I want to encourage you to start thinking about how you could use your voice to help change the life of someone else. When we understand the power of one voice, the one voice doesn't necessarily have to be you getting up in front of people and speaking. It doesn't have to necessarily be you on the front line with pickets and yard signs fighting for what you believe in. It can start with using a hashtag, 
such as, we, such as we've seen in our nation with the hashtag MeToo movement started by Tarana Burke as she fought against the issues of sexual abuse and harassment. We also can share our stories by tweeting them out, by encouraging our brothers and sisters in which we dwell with. When I look at the power of a voice, I see that power even in athletes. Whether we agree or disagree with some of the things that we see and as far as protests, we can understand the power of utilizing your voice to engage people in the conversation as we look at individuals such as Colin Kaepernick, who understood the power of a knee and that no matter what, he knew people were going to not agree with him, but he still decided to speak up for those like Eric Gardner, Tamir Rice, Freddie Gray, and the names of so many young men of color who were slain at the hands of law enforcement. We understand the power of a hashtag when we see a fight between movements with the hashtag Black Lives Matter and hashtag Blue Lives Matter, when we understand that all, all of our lives do matter but each of those have their own topic, their own voice. Each one of those movements have their own identity and they don't compare. When we see individuals being bullied and we speak up for those who are being bullied, when we hear racist remarks within our families or on our jobs, when we share the stories of those who may not look like us, but are cool and down with us, who are our colleagues or our friends or people we've passed in the hallways at school. When we hear our friends in the locker rooms making locker room banter, and we speak up for the women who may not be present to speak up for themselves, we understand that our voice has power. Our voice has power. And I just want to encourage you today to look at your personal life story. How could it shape policies in your community? How could it change practices and procedures on your job? I have one belief a strong belief in our society. And I believe that everyone, regardless of where they live, deserves access to the essential ingredients to lead successful lives. They deserve viable housing and transportation choices, living wage jobs, great schools, access to post-secondary education, strong social networks, safe and walkable streets and services, parks, and access to healthy food. But I know one thing. If we don't utilize our voices to advocate for those individuals who need access to all of those things that I just mentioned, we won't have access to them. 